Okay, welcome everybody to this little tutorial on exchange correlation potentials. <clears throat> you know, in TFT, in density functional theory, we have hundreds of them. And um, in the next 20 minutes, I cannot explain you everything uh, about them and uh, where to use them. But I want to give you some short overview of uh, what is in these different exchange correlation potentials and um, some ideas how they are developed so that you can judge um, what uh, you're actually using here every day. Um, and therefore we first um, look a little bit um, more basic theories uh, to grasp concepts like what is self-interaction um, and uh, we will look at this in context of the Hartree approximation and then we will uh, see what is exchange. This is uh, naturally occurring in the Hartree-Fock approximation. And then we look in density functional theory, um, how these things uh, look there. And first we focus on the local density approximation, um, discuss the concept of the exchange correlation hole to explain also the success of the LDA. And, um, and then um, we look a little bit beyond LDA simple uh, gradient expansions, GGAs, and uh, some simple applications. Um, in all these series, of course, we want to, in the end to um, solve a many body Schrodinger equation. Um, and uh, in the quantum chemical world, there are some uh, simple approximations for that. For example, the Hartree approximation where you make product ansatz um, for the many body wave function. Then there is uh, the Hartree-Fock method where uh, you use a determinant ansatz to incorporate in the Pauli principle and uh, you can also make linear combinations of determinants and configuration interaction methods and of course many things beyond that which are not so relevant for us here. Now let's first look in at this uh, Hartree approximation and uh, now I write the manipulative Schrodinger equation into some local term, this HI here and the electron-electron interaction term. And now uh, if I insert my wave function, my product wave function, and then um, immediately I arrive at uh, a complicated system of um, coupled differential equations which uh, individually they look like a single particle Schrodinger equation here but for every um, wave function here I have a different potential that arises from all the electrons except uh, the one electron that I actually want to describe and um, this makes the Hartree approximation actually rather complicated and therefore what um, Hartree suggested is to average now over all particles you approximate um, this potential um, in this way so you make it particle independent and uh, with this so-called Hartree potential you then come to the Hartree equation which looks like a conjunct equation um, without exchange correlation uh, potential here. So that means what uh, has to be included in the exchange correlation potential is one thing that has to be included is the self-interaction here um, which um, subtracts the uh, interaction of the particle with its own density. Um, if we go one step further to the Hartree-Fock approximation, then um, we use now a determinant wave function which um, incorporates the fermionic statistics in the way that uh, if you exchange now in such a, a pro, um, determinant wave functions to particles, then the wave function acquires a minus sign um, as it should be for a fermion. And um, yeah, with this um, more complicated ansatz, you arrive after some math at the so-called Hartree-Fock equation, which um, 
now includes not only the spatial coordinate r but also the spin sigma here and uh, we have now an equation that looks like the Hartree equation in the first part and the second part this is the so-called exchange term um, which is a little bit more complicated and uh, again um, depends on all the other orbitals and other spins um, and uh, in this term actually uh, describes the anti-symmetry and the Coulomb interaction um, of the particle. Now, if um, we compare this to our Hartree equation, now with the self-interaction correction um, that uh, we had before, and then <coughs> we see that Hartree and Hartree Fock look rather similar. Only thing is that um, we have the second term here um, only for the uh, orbitals with the other spin here. And uh, this um, makes uh, the essence of this um, exchange principle. Now, um, we can rewrite this um, last term here also in the form of a non-local potential and <laughs> then we see uh, the hartree fock equation has now this direct term and this exchange term where these indices i and j are exchanged here and this is the origin of the name exchange in hartree fock Now, um, you can interpret this, as I told you, as a potential which depends now not on a single spatial coordinate but on two spatial coordinates, r and r prime, as is a non-local potential. And uh, you can think that this is created by a density, again a non-local density, given by this expression here. And this so-called exchange density um, has some uh, known properties. For example, if you integrate um, it, uh, then you see that the contained charge is exactly minus one. So this is how this uh, hole here would look like. And uh, in, in the limit of uh, r prime goes to r, and then you come to this um, yeah, self-interaction-like form that we had um, originally. So <clears throat> this was all known already in, um, in the 50s here. Um, so exchange was well understood and everything that is now beyond is uh, what we call nowadays the correlation and uh, um, appears now in the more complicated um, kinetic energy terms um, in our equation. So if we take now this know-how and transfer it to density functional theory, let me shortly remind you about the um, basics of the Holmberg cohn and cohn chain theory, then we see we have um, again very similar uh, expressions. We have the uh, interaction with an external potential, we have this what we call Hartree um, energy um, before, and then we have all this unknown rest that uh, in the Konshan uh, theory then was divided into the kinetic energy of the non-interacting particles and the exchange correlation um, energy here. And the derivative of this exchange correlation um, energy then it actually gives this exchange correlation potential um, which appears in the Conjunct equation. Now, um, that means if we compare now the Conjunct equation um, with the exchange correlation potential to Hartree Fock or Hartree, then um, this exchange correlation potential, um, as we discussed already, um, corresponds either to this self interaction correction here or this. Um, exchange term um, in the Hartree-Fock approximation. 
Uh, you can do a local approximation. You say I want a local theory, and um, as later did this um, already before the invention of DFT, and then you arrive at uh, an expression that says that this exchange potential here is some prefactors times uh, the density to the power one third. And, uh, and this was actually used in the early days of density functional theory quite successfully with a little bit uh, scaling sometimes to uh, make a simple local density exchange correlation potentials. Um, if um, you want to know um, why this was actually so successful, then it is interesting to look again at this exchange correlation density. I discussed already the exchange density, but you can uh, extend this concept to an exchange correlation density, of course, and you can um, separate it into some local contribution and something that comes from the um, correlation function uh, v here, the so-called whole function has been multiplied to the local density, and um, you know that the exchange correlation energy um, is then given by an double integral over this um, exchange density. Here. In the local approximation, and then um, this means that this whole function that uh, we introduced here it depends now not on two spatial coordinates but only on the relative distance between them and the um, uh, and the local density at a certain point and um, one can um, now look how this looks uh, in a system where the exact where the exact uh, whole um, exchange densities are known and compare them to the uh, local density um, approximations and you can see for the nitrogen atom here so the exact uh, exchange density now we take a certain point here and look along um, a line for the second coordinate and this is um, then at some other point you see that the exact shape and the local density shape is, is actually very different. So you wouldn't um, expect um, a good performance for this, but uh, if you compare now at the same point, um, the spherical average is around this point. Now for the exact and for the local density approximation, then you see there's actually quite good correspondence. Um, in um, these two different uh, positions here and, uh, and the fact that this is not so sensitive to the um, real form but just to this averaged form here um, actually makes the LDA quite good in practice. So people now of course they tried to go beyond um, in this local density approximation by making gradient expansions, which is a natural attempt um, already quite early. Uh, there were the so-called gradient expansions that uh, were constructed. And uh, for this you say, okay, my exact uh, exchange correlation energy is um, this LDA exchange correlation energy plus um, something that depends on the gradient or on the square of the gradient and um, the um, density is then given by a constant density plus some perturbation in the vicinity this uh, delta n here so and uh, then we try to expand in terms of this uh, variation of the density now there are certain things that we know, for example, the uh, integral over the density has to be constant, therefore um, the integral over the variations has to vanish. So in this expansion of the exchange correlation energy, all the first order terms in the end vanish and uh, only the second order terms survive. 
and uh, for the second order terms here we can look what uh, do we know um, and this um, second variational derivative here which is called the exchange correlation kernel um, now in the homogeneous electron um, gas approximation um, depends only on the difference of r minus r prime this is a little bit like uh, what I explained to you before with the exchange correlation hold the same property and uh, now you can look at the local approximation and uh, go from real space to reciprocal space and then <coughs> you get in the local um, approximation a known form of this exchange correlation kernel for k equal zero and a given density now <coughs> since you know this you can use this as a starting point now to expand um, for different um, for different reciprocal ve lattice vectors and you get an expansion of this uh, kernel here with expansion coefficients alpha and beta which uh, belong then to the square and to the fourth um, order of the um, wave vector and of course they also depend on the local density n0 now for the exchange correlation energy um, and this means that uh, we get then expansion terms with this alpha factor and with this beta factor and with this um, gradient squares and squares of the gradient square and so on. Um, turned out that this is actually quite good for small r minus r prime differences but uh, performs uh, considerably worse if you go in the limit of large r minus r primes so that in overall this gradient um, expansion approximations performed rather badly so what people try to do next um, is to say now um, don't um, make a strict expansion in the order of um, this density variations here but rather I choose now my function that depends on the density the gradient of the density and the Laplacian um, so that some exact properties that I know that they are fulfilled or I try to fit this function so to reproduce exchange correlation energies of known systems and um, of course what uh, you ideally want is that uh, this um, approximation that you get then is, is non-empirically is based on uh, quantum mechanical principles it's universal so it uh, is good for all systems it should also be rather simple and in the end rather accurate and um, now there are these old many forms of, of GGAs that are around. PBE is a very popular one, PB91 and so on. <coughs> and that uh, fall into these categories here. And uh, let me just uh, show you a little bit the difference uh, between LDA and GG in the end. And two examples. The first one is iron, which was one of the big... Uh, improvements that uh, GG made over LDA so in LDA these are these dashed lines here um, <coughs> in the ground state was predicted to be FCC of iron and paramagnetic but uh, we all know that iron is ferromagnetic and BCC and this was higher in energy and if we compare this to the GG result then we see in uh, GG BCC was the ground state and uh, the FCC phases were actually higher and also the um, ground state volume was uh, quite close to the experimental ones so in this case clearly GGA gives the better structure and uh, this is also true for chromium but um, in chromium we uh, observe that for example the magnetic properties are not so well reproduced we find the um, equilibrium volume here 
actually quite close to the experimental one. We see that uh, GJ predicts chromium to be antiferromagnetic. This is also okay. Um, uh, LDA chromium was non-magnetic uh, with a too small volume here. Um, but um, now if we look at the magnetic moment of chromium, this is 1.2 here in GGA, which is almost a factor 2 too high to the, as compared to the experimental one, um, which is 0 0.6. And um, as it turns out, if you take the GGA optimized volume and use an LDA to describe the magnetic properties, you get a quite good agreement uh, between um, the theory and the experimental values. But of course this in the end always <coughs> requires some um, testing what you actually then use for your calculation in the end. Now, um, of course the developments didn't stop here uh, with the gradients. People added more and more to the exchange correlation potentials. In the meta GGA, um, the kinetic energy uh, was density was added here as additional input to the function of hyper GGAs were constructed where exact exchange energy, Hartree Fock like, was, was added. And uh, then you come already to an orbital based VFT, which is, of course, uh, sounds a little bit strange. But uh, yeah, this is what in the moment gives um, so the best uh, ab initio results also the costs uh, were rather high. <coughs> um, but uh, this development here, um, sometimes called uh, the Jacobs ladder to chemical accuracy, so things um, get better and better the more input you give into your um, exchange correlation potential. Now, yeah, but this I want to come to an end. I hope I could show you a little bit how um, these functionals are constructed, how they evolved out of uh, local Hartree Fock type um, forms with uh, always increasingly more accuracy. Some know how came from quantum Monte Carlo data and fit into databases and the um, inclusion of all kinds of things beyond the density. Um, in the end, you have to choose the correct exchange correlation potential according to the problem that you want to solve, the accuracy that you need. And um, yeah, I wish you good luck in this choice and thank you for your attention.